Imagine an office, one that doesn't have a monitor, has no speakers, even a keyboard is optional. All it has is a desk, and on that desk, the Apple Vision Pro. Now at first, this office might look a very boring one, but upon mounting the Vision Pro on your head, an unlimited world opens, one constrained solely by your imagination. Sounds pretty exciting, right? Well, it's not. At least not yet. Let me start this video by admitting I'm somewhat of an Apple fanboy, but not from a religious end-all be-all standpoint. I simply like how their ecosystem gets out of my way when I need to get things done. I edit these videos on my Mac Studio, I create I create thumbnails on my iPad, I make my phone calls on an iPhone, and so does my wife, and yes, even my kids. Uh, those who are old enough to have a phone, that is. I even have a couple of old MacBooks somewhere in the basement. So, why am I telling you all this? Because I really, really, really wanted to like the Apple Vision Pro. Really. And I did, uh, for the first hour or so, which is approximately how long the wow factor lasted. But before we get to the reasons why the very next day of having it, I felt absolutely no desire to put it back on my head, let's first talk about the positive parts of my experience. The very first thing I noticed once it was set up properly, more on that soon, was, I don't know how to really call it, uh, spatial anchoring? What I mean by this is that when you take a window, say Safari, and drag it into a certain position, then it will stay in that position pretty much indefinitely. You can walk around the room, come back, and it will still be there. This was also a surprise for me in a way, because I thought that Windows slash apps follow you around as you move. Well, they don't. They stay where you leave them, which kind of makes sense given how Apple calls this a spy spatial, spatial computing device. Combine this with how it pretty much perfectly tracks your eyes and uses them as a cursor and your hands for clicking and dragging, and the experience is pretty awesome and becomes very intuitive in a matter of minutes. If I was asked to imagine how a perfect interaction between a VR headset or a spatial computer and its user, user, <laughs> and its user should look like, then what Apple has done here is damn near perfect. Every window has a dot and a line below, and if you look at the dot, it becomes an X, which you then have to pinch in order to close the window. But if you look at the line, it becomes sort of a handle with which you can move the window around to either get it out of your way or bring it closer. Additionally, if you look at either of the bottom corners, another line appears which lets you resize the window. It works, and it works great. With basics out of the way, my friend who lent me this device told me I should also try three apps to experience the immersion. First, Apple TV, or more specifically, content that was, that was recorded uh, to experience with the, 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 the content that was recorded to experience specifically the Vision Pro. And boy, does it deliver. I watched the show called Highlining, which for some reason is impossible to mirror onto a separate screen, so you'll just have to believe me on my word. It feels like you're there. You can look up, down, left, right, within an 80, 180 degrees radius, and well, you get dizzy because this episode takes, places, uh, takes place high in the Norway fjords where a woman named Faith Dicky walks on a line between two, well, fjords. It's scary and feels hella realistic. I'll leave a link down below to the documentary so you can check out this wild hobby. The next app I tried is called Dino World and it's just a couple of minutes long showcase of a couple of dinosaurs that walk around and do stuff until one of them decides to step out of this screen towards you. It's pretty cool, but well, there's not much to do about it. You experience it, close the app, and never feel the need to experience it again. Well, unless you wanna show it to your friends for a quick laugh. And even then, that can be very frustrating for reasons we'll come to soon. 
And the third app that I was told to try is called a jig, which honestly was the only truly useful app that I think could justify the existence of such a device, or to put it differently, it would be a valid reason to purchase it, uh, for now at least. Jig is an app that lets us assemble and disassemble stuff. The first demo I tried, for example, was a 3D model of a jet engine. While it wasn't very detailed, meaning it had no screws or wires or other minor parts were missing, wink wink Boeing, it was definitely enough for me to go in and see how all the components not only fit together but also work together. I imagine this could be very useful for people who work with physical products together. You know, if you encounter an issue, you import the models into the virtual space, put on the Vision Pro and investigate it in 3D. And I know what you might be thinking at this point, why not develop the whole product within the environment of the Vision Pro in the first place, right? And that, my dear viewer, brings me to the negative aspects of the Vision Pro. Since my unit is a borrowed one, the first thing I needed to do was to calibrate the device to my eyes. And that itself took 15 minutes. Why? Remember earlier I said that your eyes are the pointing device when using the Apple Vision Pro? Well, if uncalibrated, then when you need to enter the password, for example, which is when the device turns on, you have to figure out the offset you need to consciously apply with your eyes in order to look at the correct number. So if the password has number five in it and you need to press it, but when you actually look at five, the number four highlights again, because it's uncalibrated. And then you need to look at six in order to press five. It might sound funny now that I'm talking about it, but I'm very much used to Apple devices just to work. And because nobody told me about this offset, well, it became frustrating very fast. Until I asked my mate about it and he was, oh yeah, go ahead to control panel and calibrate your eyes. Thank you, Mitya. Anyway, at this point, I already had the Vision Pro on my head for about 30 minutes or so, uh, which is where my second major problem kicked in, head fatigue. And the reason? Solo knit band. It looks great, it feels great, doesn't work. Because of the weight of the device and the fact that there's no straps going over your head with the solo knit band that is, uh, for it to have a proper fit, you have to sufficiently tighten it. And when you do, well, your forehead starts to hurt after a while at least mine did. And Apple knew this, which is why every Vision Pro ships with the dual loop band that also goes over your head and is miles ahead in terms of comfort and pretty much the preferable choice for anyone that wears this device for more than just a couple of minutes. It doesn't look as sexy on the photos though. And the physical annoyances don't stop with the bands. Many other reviewers I watched complained about the field of vision, which I must admit I didn't immediately understand. I mean, I know what FOV is, I just didn't understand how it applies to the VR headsets, mainly because I have never owned one. Here's how it feels. Imagine taking two toilet paper uh, cones, uh, you know, what's left of it when you run out of it, then put these cones in front of your eyes and look at the world through the holes in them. It's hard to describe it without experiencing it uh, yourself. Let's just say it feels like your head is in a box. And talking about the toilet paper, <laughs> another major annoyance was that whenever I would take the Vision Pro off my head to, you know, not to use it for a short period to actually go to the toilet, it would lose all the windows and close all the apps regardless if I wanted it or not. And I get it, Apple wants this on my head at all times, which is why they have built in all the cameras and sensors and the display <laughs> with those blurry eyes in front, but well, I'm not a fan. I don't want to wear it while talking to my wife or hugging my kids when they come from school. It's awkward, it's creepy, and it's unnecessary. Okay, now let's talk about the user experience with the operating system. Obviously, because the device is fairly new and there isn't many apps that would leverage its, its full potential, I decided to try out the one use case I would consider, it, uh, consider purchasing it for. The same one I described in the intro of this video as a replacement for my monitors. This part actually surprised me in more ways than one, both negative and positive. Once I signed into my Apple account on the Vision Pro, pairing it with my Mac Studio, or to put it differently, making it behave as a display extension, took seconds. 
But then I got confused for a lack of a better word. You see, you can have the native Safari open in one virtual 3D window, but then your Mac Studio virtual display in another, and well, they behave differently. If the native Safari, uh, if you look at the buttons, they light up, telling you you can interact with them with your hands, so either pinching to click or pinch and hold to drag. But in the virtual window of my Mac Studio, there was none of that. I had to use the keyboard and mouse like I was before putting the Vision Pro on. In an ideal world, this communication would be in both ways, meaning that if I looked, say, at a menu item in my virtual screen from my Mac, it would light up the same way as if I hover a mouse over it. However, the one thing I was positively surprised by was that in this mode, the keyboard automatically worked in both. So if I looked at the native Safari address bar and clicked, I could use the physical keyboard connected to the Mac Studio just the same way as if I clicked in the address bar of the Safari within the extended screen of the Mac Studio. And while I was in this dual mode, I also somewhat by accident discovered this immersion mode, which Apple calls environments. And it's actually quite amazing. Once you select an environment, your whole area in front of you turns into either a desert, the moon, a Greek island, a lake, and what have you. Because without this, the Vision OS displays your surroundings as you use it. These environments really help not only with immersion, but remove all the visual distractions in the environment you're physically in. And yes, I know that the Vision Pro is supposed to be a standalone device, no other Apple device is necessary, but as I said earlier, um, there aren't many apps for the Vision Pro yet, uh, so it only makes sense to connect it to the studio. And honestly, I'd be much more tempted to purchase this device if it didn't try to replace both the computer and the monitor. Imagine if there was a non-pro version of this device without the M2 chip and it needed the host, be it a Mac Studio or a MacBook Pro. And then imagine that because of that, we didn't need a monitor at all. We could simply launch all the apps within the virtual space if, if, as if they were on the monitor, but well, in the 3D space. Now that would be amazing. So Apple, if you're listening, which I know you're not, here are some ideas for the non-pro version of the Apple Vision. A, better ergonomics. Solo knit band sucks and you know it. Also, the front glass is too heavy and I'm afraid it will break. B, battery is too small and very annoying. Make it bigger, MagSafe and optional for those of us who want to use the device for work purposes and can be tethered to another device. C, make the OLED screens and lens wider to either completely eliminate or at least mitigate the tunnel vision effect and increase the field of vision. D, make it dumber. No need for an M2, M1, M3 chip. I already have devices with those and I'd like to, those to get a 3D extension or as you call it, become spatially computive. Um, e, when I take it off, I want it to remain in exactly the same state that I left it in. Don't force me to go to the toilet with the device on my head. And lastly, I think it's F, price it at 1500 euros or thereabouts and I'll be the first in line because after all, I'm an Apple fanboy. Now before we wrap this up, I want to ask a little favor of you, the viewer. Uh, this unit was loaned to me by a good friend of mine who just founded a research group focused on developing experiences for the Apple Vision Pro. He asked me whether my audience, or at least those of you more interested in the VR slash AR, uh, would be willing to participate in a really short survey. I'll leave a link down below and if you have 30 seconds to spare, go ahead and fill it out. Tomasz from Slovenia, signing out.